Hello everybody, welcome to my weekend vlog. This is a quick one this week. Um, two things I want to talk about. Three, the uh, a new system where you can download my big travel shows, my big productions, my other stuff that you absolutely love. You can now download it to be able to watch it offline. More about that now. Uh, Canning Stock Route. Um, I have a request to make. Very quick. Um, if you like the videos, and I know a lot of you, a lot of you are loving them, please click the like button. I never ask, I never nag, because it annoys me when other people ask, ask me, but actually, it's not an unfair request. Just like the, just tell YouTube that it's good. You tell YouTube that it's good, and YouTube will share it with more people, and it helps me out. <clears throat> oh, and the, um, the, the troop carrier. Some news coming up now. Established in 1996, Forex Overland is the world's first global overland expedition channel. Join us as we explore the world by four-wheel drive. This is um, quite a recent thing, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video, is that um, video on demand. My old view page is actually closed, and the reason for it is that it wasn't that well frequented. But those who were using it were contacting me and saying, I'd love to watch your shows while I'm on a plane or I want to be, I want to, even on a trip, I want to be able to watch your shows offline. So for me to be able to do that, I had to find a new platform. And those platforms are actually quite expensive to run. But along came, at the same time with that idea, friends crossed the canning. And I wanted to offer it to people that really love the show for you to be able to download all 12 episodes and not have to wait the 12, 13 weeks for them to roll out on YouTube. And so they can, for a fee, download it in 4K. It's not on 4K in, in, on YouTube and it won't be. It's uh, so they can download it or stream it immediately right there onto their television sets. And so it's the best of both, both worlds. And as a result of that, I've added a lot of my my best programming. For example, Love is Blind, my documentary on how I acquired the Range Rover that came along on the Canning Stock Route. Six episodes. Canning Stock Route 2017, my first Australian Outback expedition in 2017 in feature length. Many who've seen it think it's the best I've ever done in Australia. I've put up some of my aviation work. Some of them have actually been broadcast on Discovery Channel. The Crossing, Crossing Australia. This was 2018. Crossed twice, once the easy way and then the not so easy way across the Red Centre. Africa Big Game, in search of close encounters with African animals. One of the best productions I've done in Africa now compressed into three episodes, all feature length. Some of the best work I have ever done. This was a 13 part series for television, now compressed into three feature length episodes. The search for the source of the Okavango and the highly acclaimed Overland feature film, Cry of the Kalahari. This feature film was shown at a cinema in Albany to raise funds for a local charity. Some of my best work without question. I have gone through my um, backlist and put up my best work. Uh, and, and the canning is, it is definitely listed amongst my best work. It's a new, it's a departure from what I normally do. And we loved doing it and we are going to do some more. And it'll be along the same lines. More channel news. I have promised you and I will not let you down. You've been waiting for a video about my trip carrier in terms of the detail. I am actually, I've already started shooting it and I will, I'm hopefully going to release it the second week in October around there and I will go through my build in a lot of detail, more detail than I have ever been on a build before. And also I will be going through my phase two, phase two. I, like I did with my first Australian troop carrier. Built it, went on the canning, did a few other smaller trips, and then quite, did quite a bit of tweaking to get it just right. And I'm doing exactly the same with this troop carrier. And I've got some very interesting products that I've been researching to improve 
performance, particularly fuel economy, because it's not particularly good. And, it, and they're never, none of these V8s are particularly good, but they're not terrible either. I can get this a lot better. And also, uh, phase two in terms of the comfort inside. This is the center console. I've been building it myself. I'll show you that. Exterior lighting and the interior packing space. Some of the space in here is a little bit difficult to get to. And at the moment I've got my spares and things in there and I actually needed to get to them on the trip and I found it a little bit too difficult. So I've got some ideas uh, for, for improving packing space in the back. There are more tweaks than major changes, but um, I'll share that with you as well as a foundation for, as I do the phase two, I will be releasing videos. Great news about the Canning, Friends Crossing the Canning series, is there is a, I'm about to shoot episode 13. When we got home, I immediately went into my edit. And basically nobody saw me for three weeks until I had edited <clears throat> eight episodes. And then we had a gathering of the crew and all the families. you got no bloody shirt on. <laughs> and we showed it on, we projected it on a big screen. And also at that time, Heiner didn't know about uh, one of the Range Rover's breakdowns. We'll do it a little bit with the Range Rover, because the next minute the unthinkable happened. And I think that breakdown is episode 12 and we showed it to him in my living room and his reaction so episode 13 is the toll the <clears throat> also the toll the track took on the vehicles they all took up a, a real beating and we want to go into a little bit of the detail on actually what it took to get them right what it took to repair them and you actually have to see the range rover particularly the range rover in terms of its bodywork how its bodywork it, it actually had a gloss lacquer finish when I bought it a year ago, a little more than a year ago. It's now matte, and I want to show you that. But, <clears throat> and also some of the mechanical issues that we had to deal with on all of the vehicles. So that's coming soon. So all of the, those of you who support the channel with Patreon, thank you so much. Your contributions make this channel possible. You know, I... I'm a television producer. I, I spent many years in television. I had my own television series, for those of you who don't know. I had nine series that were broadcast in South Africa. Uh, they were produced in South Africa. They were based in South Africa, but Southern Africa. And um, they were actually broadcast in several countries, including Belgium, um, uh, Russia, translated, um, Thailand and one or two series in New Zealand. <clears throat> okay, I still, I still make for television. The Friends Across the Canning is a, actually a television series. It's edited for television. Uh, and I'm putting it on a format that is actually not well suited to it. But if I put it on any other format, um, that's a challenge. Now here's the challenge with getting I mean, I think it's good enough for broadcast on quite some major channels. I think it's good enough. I'm certainly getting the kind of reviews that one wants to get on all one's videos. You're loving it, loving it. They're just people, it's been called a masterpiece, etc., etc. Lots and lots of praise. Thank you for those of you who are commenting and saying how much you like it. It's, it's, that's, that's valuable to everybody involved. That's not enough to get it onto a network. And the only way and to get it onto a TV network is for a television show to stumble upon it. And secondly, if you know somebody in the industry. It's a very, very closed industry. It's very, very difficult to get in. It's elitist. And um, I, I, yes, I think for my personal uh, fulfillment, I'd like to see it on television. But I also think it's a status thing. I like the idea that I've managed to get on television. Um, but it's an incredibly tough process. It's like, and my wife is an is a author, and she's actually had her books on the New York Times bestseller list. To get a traditional publisher to find it, even that isn't enough. You still have to go through the process of uh, the front desk, where they check manuscripts, and if you haven't caught their attention in the first Oh, not even a page, you haven't got a hope. 
the, you could have written Harry Potter, but it's not going to get anywhere because the person who is reading that front page might not like that kind of writing. <clears throat> it's exactly the same with television. The person, the agency that you contact might not like adventure, travel, comedy, unscripted, the genre that we have created. It, it, the genre we, you know, is the same as Top Gear and, 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 and that kind of thing, Top Gear specials and uh, Grand Tour. It's the same genre that we have created with Friends Cross Cunning. Um, you may be the person who watches it doesn't actually particularly like that kind of television. Then you can't get in. It's, it's, it's a, the process is incredibly old-fashioned. The process of getting onto television. It is still in the stone age. You don't have scouts from who understand what, tele, what makes good television. Scanning Vimeo and YouTube. You don't. And that is the, one of the main reasons why so much television, terrestrial television, is so... I was going to say, poor is the wrong word. It's not poor. It's same old, same old. And th so few new ideas ever get presented. And even with uh, streaming services like Netflix, they have a show now called, and I shake my head in despair, called uh, Sex Bedrooms. I didn't look at it closely. I looked at the trailer in amazement. It's about people that build rooms especially for having sex in. Uh, can you scrape the barrel any deeper? Netflix. Discovery Channel started doing that and went purely hype, hype-filled rubbish, which was, you know, reality shows like um, Open a Container, Container Wars, I think they called it. Reality TV. You, you do realize that what reality TV is. Reality TV is another way of saying heavily scripted, make it look real TV. That's what reality TV is. Don't be fooled for a second. It's scripted. Top Gear specials and, and uh, French Cross Canning. French Cross Canning is not scripted at all. When we left, we didn't even know what we were going to do, too, honestly. And it started with Heiner saying, you know, they'd painted the Range Rover's toe pulling eyes at the front, recovery eyes at the front, bright pink. And I said, I hated it. And he said, well, that was actually the point. And I, I was one of the first things we shot on the trip. And I realized at the time, this is, this is very good. There's going to be this, and it continued when the Range Rover first broke down. And, and I realized, you know, Heiner is being merciless at me for not checking the shock absorber thing. Well, it was a delight to me when the Range Rover broke down. Uh, Hilux broke down. An absolute delight to me. And Rob and I showed him no mercy when his Hilux started giving trouble. And of course, when the Range Rover's lights failed. Oh, have you, have you got to that bit yet on the series? I don't think you have. No, you haven't. Oh, we did have some breakdowns on the Range Rover. And Heiner is merciless. But it didn't matter. It was just plain fun. So it's very... Um, Friends is, across the canning is really unscripted. Until a point where somebody would come up with an idea. And I as director would say, oh, okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on to that idea. And then there'll be, uh, you know, all of the crew would say, oh, this, 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 and then I would pick the best bits and film it like I would film my TV show. So it was set up, but it was not scripted because somebody came up with a good gag. Some of the gags were kind of, it was fantastic because the gag would, and I would look around, at, were the guys actually laughing at somebody else's suggestion? But sometimes somebody else would make a suggestion and everybody else would be in guffaws of laughter and then I knew it was funny. Then I knew that that's funny. So you have to, you, you gauge the comedy by 
uh, how people react. And then you have to pull back on comedy. Comedy is all about timing. Um, I've collected comedy since I was nine years old, and I have a collection of a thousands of comedy radio shows. So it's been a bit of a hobby. And I realized that, in fact, the comments were coming and I had to distill them uh, from the guys. What was funny and wasn't, what, what, what wasn't. And some of these things came out, they're absolutely hysterical, and a lot of the times jokes came up the, the camera was not running at the time, wasn't, they had no camera on them, and they were really, really funny. And I realized, I can't retell them. The comedy was the moment, as well as what was being said. What we'd like to do in the future is actually take more cameras and try and get more of that, and then distill in the edit suite what's funny and what's, you know, what has been, because a joke, you need to set up a joke, so that when it happens, it's funny. Uh, if there's no context, it's much more difficult to get. You, you, need, you need context to be, to be, for it something to be humorous. And um, the, 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 we could have made it funnier, but we, the last thing we will do in any of the shows that we make is to contrive it by scripting it. Shows like Top Gear and Grand Tour Specials, the big ones, are semi-scripted. They do have guidelines. It is not unscripted, as many think. But it is also <clears throat> scripted to the point where they, and I've read quite a few books on, on, um, on the, those series, they were allowed free reign. And that, I remember one joke, which was one of the funniest jokes, and it's so simple. James May's broken his, broken his arm, and he's whinging about the fact that he's finding it difficult to drive. And he's standing there with a plaster cast. And Hammond and May are standing there. And Hammond says, he's, he <laughs> May says, I've broken my arm. And Hammond says, which arm? And Clarkson nearly loses it. Now that is genuine people being funny. That is not scripted. They did set it up that he would have a broken arm and tell the guys that he had a broken arm. And then the left was left up to them. If it was funny, it would go into the show. If it wasn't, it wouldn't go into the show. And that's how they edited it. And that's kind of how we're doing it, going to be doing it too. We'll have loose scenarios planned out so we know where to put the cameras and what we're filming. The ASPW Trap, for example, in episode, I think that's the, is that the next one? I, I think that's episode eight. I think that's episode eight. Watch episode eight. That was not scripted at all. And they just set it up, and I set up the camera, and I had no known reason why I should film this. None at all. Turned out to be a really, really funny sequence. They had, this was their idea of the, the coke, and they, you haven't seen it yet, I won't spoil it. It was their idea. I thought it had potential to be funny. If it didn't have a follow-on, I wouldn't have put it in. Because in, on its own, it was a bit, hmm. It was funny, but it wasn't, it became funny, because of what followed, and what followed it was utterly unscripted. And we actually filmed the piece trying to script it, and failing. And we were filming while trying to script it, and made the whole thing funny. So, I know a lot of you are really, really enjoying the show. We had an enormous amount of fun. Episode 13 will be added to the video on demand list on... Um, as soon as it's edited, about two weeks' time, on the Video On Demand pages. So those of you who have purchased it can go back and just download that for no extra charge. Just go and download that additional episode 13. And YouTube, you will get it too. It'll be after, obviously, episode 12. That's my uh, little vlog about the channel. We've got fantastic things planned. Um, we've got overseas sh shoots planned. And... Um, uh, and for those of you in, the, in North America, I will be, and hopefully Gwyn as well, we're planning that, be at Overland Expo West Arizona in 2023. That's in May. I look forward to seeing you there. And thanks for watching.